Street Life Ministries is a Christ following nonprofit that serves homeless folks on the Mid Peninsula. We meet really interesting people. And today, we'd like to share one of those with you. Hi, everybody. I'm here today with uh, a friend of ours, uh, Chappelle, who is going to share uh, his story with us of what it's been like and what it's like now to previously be on the streets and now not being on the streets and how God has touched his life. So Chappelle, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story with us today. Um, but before we get started, if we can, let's give this to the Lord, okay? Yes. So Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for all of the amazing work that you have done in Chappelle's life. God, thank you so much for the testimony uh, that he is about ready to share with our audience. God, I just ask you just to bless this testimony, Lord. I pray that his testimony and his uh, time with us, uh, whoever watches this video or hears this podcast, I pray that this is a moment that they um, feel touched and blessed by the Lord. And anybody who's watching this that may be struggling with addiction or homelessness will see that um, when we give ourselves and surrender ourselves to the Lord, that we, our lives can change. So God, thank you so much for this man and what you have done in his life and the way that you have changed it and created him into a whole new existence um, only because of you, God. And we know this is only possible through your son, Jesus Christ. And in his name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So how are you doing, Chappelle? I'm doing good. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming in sure. this morning. So, so tell us a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? Where were you raised? Mom, dad, all that stuff. Brothers, sisters. Um, okay. I was born in San Francisco, St. Mary's Hospital. Um, I grew up, we left uh, San Francisco when I was 11 years old. I lived in uh, Portrayal Hill for a while, and I lived, uh, the Pink Palaces was the project they tore down. It was just too violent, so my mom wanted to come out here with my grandmother, and my grandma moved out here from San Francisco, and I came to Redwood City when I was 11 years old in 1976. And I pretty much lived in Redwood City since then. And, um, you know, my life was, you know, I had my grandmother. My mom was an alcoholic. And I had an older brother and a younger sister, different dads. So I grew up, you know, so-so, I guess. Um, my grandma was from South America. And my dad was from South America. My mom was from Texas. And they met in college, my mom and dad. And it, it didn't work out. So, I, um, you know, got into drugs at a very young age. I got, started using when I was 10 years old. Um, and, you know, I used, you know, little weed, little alcohol. That's how it starts. Yeah. And I, as it gradually, as I got older, you know, I met my wife, my first wife. We had four kids. We was together 18 years. She stood by me as much as she could. But, you know, I got more and more wrapped in my addiction. And then, you know, that lifestyle became going to jail, getting out, going to jail, getting out, going to jail, getting out, going to programs, you know, relapsing. It was just a revolving door. And I guess um, just before I started going to prison, my wife, my first wife just couldn't do it anymore. Um, she couldn't do the time because basically when I was in jail, she was pretty much in jail. And it lasted 18 years and four kids. My last kid was, my youngest was, I think, 12 when we split up. And, you know, I was, you know, I was addicted. Hmm. And it's just like, yeah, I want to be a good man. I want to be a husband. I want to be a father. But I was just addicted. It's just hard to explain and you know I just went on in and out in and out and you know I missed so much with you know in my addiction I was there but I wasn't you know I was more in my addiction than being a father and you know my kids used to say I want to go dad I want to go dad and I just told them no the reason why I would tell them no because I was dealing drugs and I didn't want them with me and I caught myself being a good parent by not bringing them around it. But at the same time, they were, you know, raiding my house, pulling me over, you know. A lot of times I'll be by myself, and I never told anybody where I lived except I was on probation. So probation would come through and do a probation search, and they would find, you know, 
They have a fine paraphernalia, fine little bit of dope, but then I go right back to jail. Mm-hmm. So that went on for a long time. And, um, you know, I, 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 I'm not proud of the things I've done when I was out there in my addiction. You know, um, I rip people off, they rip me off, I spent all my time trying to get high. You know, I just, I, w- I wasted so much of my life. Ended up homeless. You know how that goes. Eventually you end up with nothing. And I, I will go to jail and, and tell myself all these wonderful things while I'm in jail. I will forget how horrible it was when I was out there. And then when I get out, I would say, you know, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And it would only last three, four days. <laughs> and then I'd be right back getting high again. And it's just a crazy cycle. And so I, I eventually I lost my wife, and then she left me when I left my last time I was in jail. And then my kids, you know, they believed her, and she told me she wanted full custody. And me, and with my ego, I was like, Yeah, I ain't tripping, sign the papers, go ahead, take them, you know what I mean? But I didn't really mean that, it was just my pride and ego. Sure, sure. And I regret that to this day because yeah. I got four kids with this lady. Only one of them talked to me. The other three, they don't want nothing to do with me because I've told them over and over, I'm clean, I'm good, and I believe it's just going to take time. I have four years clean next month, and, you know, my oldest daughter, she believes in me, but the other three, I actually got five kids with my eight-year-old. That's totally different, another marriage, but... You know, she believes in me, and hopefully in time, the other ones will believe in me. See, what happened to me was, um, you know, with with doing my addiction and my drug use, I have cancer. Um, I believe it has to do with the drugs I used for so many years. But my doctor said no, but I don't believe it. You know, I did methamphetamines for at least 20 years, and I smoked crack. I smoked, you know, KJ. Um, I sniffed paint, I sniffed gasoline, I sniffed glue, I did all these things. And I say it has to do with my cancer, uh, uh, contribute to my cancer. But what I'm pretty much saying is, I got stage 4 cancer, I'm terminal, I have 6 tumors, and it's a good thing about my cancer and it's a bad thing about my cancer. The good thing about my cancer is, it changed my life. Once I found out I was sick, that's just rock bottom for me. Some people hit rock bottom and they change their life. The cancer changed my whole life. Once I realized I had cancer, I come to realize I don't have any time to waste. And the day they do my autopsy, my children will know that their dad had no drugs in their system, in his system at all. So, um... I'm going on four years clean and sober, and, you know, I believe in God. I go to church every morning and pray and give thanks for giving me another day to live. Uh, my whole life has changed completely. Me being clean and sober, I got my own place. I pay all my bills. I'm responsible. Today, I'm a dad. Any of my kids can call me, and I can be there because I'm not, I'm not using, you know. Right, right. I go to all my doctor's appointments, you know, um, I'm a good listener for people that want need, want to talk, and, you know, I got some advice that could be good or bad, but I've been there, I don't judge anybody today, because I've been on both sides of the fence, you know, I've had, you know, good jobs, and I lose them all, I lost them all with my addiction, because I could never come to work on time, I just couldn't focus, but today I'm responsible and I can be there for anybody that wants to talk to me or need somebody to lean on. Today I'm a different man and thanks to the grace of God and cancer changed my whole life. Today I'm about giving back. I'm not so much about Chappelle wants this, Chappelle this. It's about what can Chappelle do to help somebody. That's where I'm at today. That's awesome, man. That's really, really cool. So tell me a little bit about um, 
what you're doing today. You're working for Downtown Streets team. Yes, I work for Downtown Street team, and I also used to give my time at Service Connect with the, at, you know with as a mentor. And um, yeah, with the COVID nineteen, that's they're not really open slash you know. The government got to shut down, but right now I'm working with Street Team, and you know I'm outreach program because I'm from Redwood City. I know everybody just about. Yeah, yeah. And they trust me, That's so. Cool. Does um, it feel good to be trusted today? Yes, it does. It yeah, does. feels good, huh? Feels yes. good to have your own place. Yes, it does. Yeah, I know. You, I know. You were telling me that you you like your. You have a dog, right? Yes, my little dog Clementine. Yes, yeah, and you have director. your own place and I have my own place. It's nice. It's nice to uh, rest. You know, you go home. It's your place. Nobody knows where it's at. You know, it's your sanctuary, so you can go there and just just be you. You right. know, and just kind of chill out. Like you said that uh, you told me that um, around around twelve thirty one o'clock, the cancer and the chemo kind of hits you like a brick wall. Yeah. So you take a like a three or four hour nap, right? Yes, every day I have to. Yes. Yeah. Um, so um, with the cancer um, being terminal, right? How how is that? How has that um, brought you closer to God? Do you think? Um, I was I always had God in my life, but not like I do today. Yeah. Um, because I talk, we talk. I talk. I talk. I talk. I call on my father. I talk to my father a lot. Yeah. You know. Um, yeah. Because, you know, uh, he's given me another chance to change the things I did wrong. What I mean by that is, you know, I'm lucky in certain ways because I know my day's coming. Mm -hmm. But I can make amends for those, all the terrible things I did to people that I love. And I'm yeah. really trying to do that. Yeah. You know? Sure. So do you, do you see, it, and here's a question that I get asked by a lot of people that watch the pod, pod or watch the YouTube and read, listen to the podcast. Do you, would you say that um, because of your change, the people that you, because you were saying you're from Redwood City, so you know a lot of people, right? right? Like you know everybody, right? And, right. So people that you know, that know you from your past and they see you today changed, do you feel like when they see you change and they hear your new, your new conversation that comes from you, do you feel like maybe they think... Well, if he could do it, I can do it. Yes, some people. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I tell people that all the time. If if Chappelle can get clean, anybody can get clean. Yeah. So, yeah, I hear that a lot. Okay. Yes. That's good. That's good. So you're able to kind of take your newfound recovery, these four years and there's cancer, and use that to help other people change their lives. Correct. Yeah. Correct. You feel like you're pretty impactful doing that right now? Yes, I am. I, I really am. And, and sometimes they come up to me and say, oh, I'm, I didn't make a spell, I relapsed. And I told them it's okay, just keep trying. Yeah. It, it, just, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah, so, I, I will say that one of the one of the things I respect about you and, and, and folks like you and I that are in recovery is that we know people that are, in, we know what it's like to be in addiction. So we also know how not to be hustled as well, too, because we know correct. all the game. We've, 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 yes. said, all, we've yes. said every game there is yes. to say, right? That's right. So you know when they're just woofing, yeah, right? Yes, so. I do. And I know when somebody's lower than when they're not. Yeah, right. So, so. I, I just give me two minutes, sit with you for two minutes, I'll know if you're high. Right. I'm a professional at that. Right. <laughs> I'm a professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in July or August, we're still raising the money, but um, we're, you know, we're going to start a men's recovery program. Cool. So it's a 12-month Christian faith-based recovery program. We're going to start it right here in Redwood City. Okay. Uh, would you be willing to be a part of that? Sure. Not, not, as a, not as a client, but somebody that comes in and maybe talk to people, share, share your story with people. As a what, like a counselor? Something like yeah, that? like an H&I like commitment. Okay. You know, coming in and, and, and working with people. Because, you know, there's going to be people that are going to come in thinking, you know, hey, I can never do this. I'm, 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 I was told I was a loser all my life, and I can't do this. And they're going right. to need someone like you to come in who probably felt like that at one time, and now your life is completely transformed, right. and you can lift them up and and kind of pass it forward, right? Sure. Would you sure. be willing to do something like that? Sure, sure. I, I, I'm willing to do even more. <laughs> I, you know, who's going to watch these people? That's right. You know what I mean? That's uh, right. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So got, got to keep accountable, right? Right, yeah. right, and um. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure, yeah. sure. So one one question I want to say. So this is this goes out on a YouTube channel and it goes out on a podcast. A lot of people in Redwood City follow this. If the three of your children that um, don't want to talk to you right now, if they 
get a hold of this and they see this, what would be something that you would want them to know right now? That I love you and I made a lot of mistakes, but I'm not that man today. Today I'm a different man and just give me a chance, you know. Um, I don't want to die not being able to talk to talk to my children or see my grandchildren. Yeah, absolutely. You know. Um, yeah, amen to that. Amen to that. Now, do you have any contact with your ex? Through my daughter, but she just... That's all in her story that yeah, I want yeah, to get yeah. into. Okay, okay. So, all right. Well, good, man. I appreciate you coming and sharing sure. and, and being a part of this, Chappelle. Sure. God bless you, man. God bless thank you, you, Thank you so much, all right? Yep. All right, man. Cool.